Let's talk about the BC NDP government. You know, David Eby and his crew have been running the show for quite some time now, and it's been a spectacle. But it's not the good kind. No, it's the everything's falling apart and they're doubling down on failure kind. Where do we even start? Corruption and scandals have become just another Tuesday in this government. We've seen ministers resigning over shady deals, conflicts of interest flying around, and ethics becoming more of a suggestion than a standard. Meanwhile, David Eby's acting like it's all business as usual. But is it too much to ask for a little transparency, a little accountability? Apparently, in BC, it is. And let's talk about this endless grab for our wallets. The carbon tax. You've probably heard EB talking about it like it's saving the planet, but the reality, it's squeezing our families dry. The cost of living in BC is already sky high, and what do they do? Slap on even more taxes. You'd think that maybe this extra money would at least help with the provincial debt, right? Wrong. The debt keeps climbing. Where's all this money going? Not to the people of BC, that's for sure. Then there's healthcare or should I say the collapse of healthcare. Emergency rooms are closing, wait times are through the roof, and people are literally dying because they can't access basic care. We have doctors leaving the province, nurses overworked and burned out, and the system is on life support. For three years, thousands of healthcare professionals were banned from working in BC due to NDP vaccine mandates, only just now allowed to return to work due to pre-election pressure from the BC Conservatives. Unfortunately, many have moved to other regions and are lost forever. Better to have staffing shortages than drop vaccine mandates. The world moved on, but Bonnie Henry couldn't let it go. But the BC NDP keeps talking about investing in healthcare. What investments? All we've seen is a crisis on top of a crisis. Speaking of crises, let's not forget the BC NDP's brilliant decision to legalize hard drugs. Because hey, if we can't solve the overdose crisis, Let's just give up and let people shoot up in peace, right? Overdose deaths are through the roof. Exceeded by many times over those deaths they shut the province down for. There are more deaths from fentanyl than ever before. And yet Eby and his ministers continue to champion this progressive approach, even though it's failing people in the worst way possible. They say it's about harm reduction, but where's the help for people who actually want to get clean? Would it make sense to give free booze to alcoholics? This is no different. Their policy is just as insane. And now we get to the woke agenda. The BC NDP isn't just messing with our money or healthcare. They're coming for our kids. So gee, sexual orientation and gender identity programs are all over the education system, kindergarten to grade 12. This government is pushing woke policies nonstop indoctrinating our children with ideas that leave parents sidelined. Teachers are expected to become activists, not educators. It's no longer about math, science, and history. Now it's about pushing their woke ideology. If you even dare to speak out against it, you're attacked as a bigot. Let's talk about fairness, or rather the lack of it. Biological males are competing in girls' sports, sharing restrooms, and even locker rooms thanks to the BC NDP's so-called inclusive policies. Where's the fairness for female athletes who work hard only to lose to someone who's biologically stronger? What about keeping our daughters and sisters safe from being exposed to male genitalia in female-only spaces? With the NDP, identity politics overrule all others. People are too scared to say anything because again, anyone who questions this is instantly shamed and attacked. It's a policy mess that only ends in division and inequality. But it doesn't end there. We've got a housing crisis. And EB's solution? Building more condos that no one can afford while homelessness skyrockets. Tent cities are spreading like wildfire all across the province. They've created an economy where young people can't get ahead. But hey, at least we have virtue signaling policies that make it look like they care. The province is a mess. And the BC NDP seems to think they can just tax, regulate, and legislate their way out of every problem while ordinary British Columbians pay the price. So what's left? A province with more debt? A healthcare system on the verge of collapse? Families struggling under crushing taxes? And a government that's more interested in pushing a woke agenda than solving real issues? David Eby might be patting himself on the back, 
but the rest of us are left wondering, what happened to the BC we used to know and love? Let's face it, the BC NDP has had their shot, and what do we have to show for it? Scandals, soaring debt, crumbling healthcare, and a province that's losing its way. But here's the good news. There is a way out. John Rustad and the BC Conservatives represent a return to common sense. While Eby and his NDP government are busy taxing you into oblivion and pushing ideological agendas, the BC Conservatives are focused on solutions that actually work. John Rustad and his team believe in getting back to basics. Do you want a government that supports families, helps small businesses, and ensures you can actually afford to live in this province? The BC Conservatives have a plan. One of the core principles of the BC Conservative Party is fiscal responsibility. Unlike the NDP who seem to think money grows on trees, the Conservatives believe in balanced budgets and living within our means. They know that endless spending leads to debt and that debt will fall on the shoulders of our future generations. Under Rust Had's leadership, we'll see a rollback of the NDP's crippling carbon tax and a reduction in taxes across the board. Why? Because they understand that the best way to stimulate the economy isn't through government handouts. It's by letting people keep more of their hard-earned money and making the province more competitive. The healthcare system doesn't need more political band-aids. It needs real reform. The BC Conservatives will cut through the bureaucracy that's choking the system, allowing doctors and nurses to do what they do best, treat patients. They're committed to reducing wait times, opening up more family doctor's offices, and ensuring British Columbians get timely care when they need it. And instead of pushing ideological nonsense, they'll focus on results, ensuring that the healthcare system is there for everyone without delay. John Rustad and the BC Conservatives know that public safety is a top priority for British Columbians. While the NDP has decriminalized hard drugs, turned a blind eye to the overdose crisis, and released repeat offenders same day on bail, the Conservatives are pushing for policies that protect communities and get addicts the help they need. Instead of letting the streets descend into chaos, they'll enforce the law, keeping criminals off the streets and invest in addiction recovery programs that actually work. It's about compassion with accountability. Two words the NDP seems to have forgotten. And let's talk about education. The BC Conservatives are committed to making sure our kids get a real education, not a political one. No more of this SOGI indoctrination that's more focused on confusing children than educating them. John Rustad and his team will ensure that parents are brought back into the conversation that teachers are focused on preparing students for the real world, and that gender politics don't overtake the curriculum. Education should be about learning, not indoctrination. And for those concerned about fairness in women's sports, the BC Conservatives are taking a stand. They believe that biological males shouldn't be competing in women's events, period. This isn't about exclusion. It's about preserving the integrity of competition and ensuring a safe and level playing field for female athletes. It's a simple, common-sense approach that respects everyone while maintaining fairness. It's time to get real. We can't afford four more years of EB and the NDP. Every day they stay in power is another day of increased taxes, more bureaucratic red tape, and deeper social division. The NDP has pushed this province to the edge. From wrecking our economy to collapsing our healthcare system, to flooding our streets with drugs, this government has proven that it is out of touch with the needs of British Columbians. We need change before it's too late. So here's the deal. If we want to save this province, we need to act and we need to act now. It's not enough to just complain about the NDP's failures. We have to do something about it. That means getting out and voting. It means talking to your friends, your family, your coworkers. Let them know what's really going on in this province and how John Rustad and the BC Conservatives offer a path to recovery. This isn't just another election, it's a turning point. It's about whether we allow the NDP to drive BC further into the ground or we take a stand, embrace common sense and restore some sanity to this province. The future of BC is at stake and every vote counts. So let's spread the word, let's have those conversations 
and let's make sure everyone understands how important it is to turn this province around. John Rustad and the BC Conservatives are ready to lead. Now it's up to you to make it happen. Thanks for your time and watching this video to the end. I hope some of this resonated with you. Please share your thoughts on these topics in the comment section below and subscribe for more content like this.